Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for AutoCAD and Mac. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I want to cover just a few housekeeping items. First, this presentation is going to be recorded, and the recording will be posted on MacMall.com a couple of days following the presentation. Also, um, we're going to go for about 15 to 20 minutes today and then um, leave some time for Q&A. So if you have any questions, um, either during or after the presentation, please go ahead and use your Q&A panel that can be found uh, on the bottom right side of your screen. Um, once our speaker today shares uh, his screen, you will notice that your Q&A panel will disappear. And you can get that back simply by hovering over the green dashboard at the top center of your screen. Scroll over to the right. There's a down arrow, and if you click on that, you can go ahead and see your Q&A screen and open that back up. So now what I'd like to do is go ahead and introduce our speaker today. Our speaker is Sean Hurley, and Sean has been a passionate user of Autodesk products, first as a customer and then as a member of the teams that define and develop the products. Sean has been with Autodesk since 1998 and currently works as a technologist for the office of the CTO and Autodesk Labs. Sean was trained as a mechanical designer and has used many of the Autodesk products as a customer prior to joining Autodesk. So now what I'd like to do is go ahead and hand it over to Sean and we can get started. So Sean, if you're ready, uh, the floor is yours. Um, it looks like you are the presenter, so all you need to do is go ahead and share your desktop. There you go. And we're good. So Sean, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, thank you for the, the nice introduction. Um, it's always great to talk with people. Preferably, I like to be in person. Uh, get to see people and kind of understand what uh, you know where they're coming from, what their in industries are. Um, but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about AutoCAD for the Mac, and uh, you know the over, we're going to do it about not 20,000 foot level, but we'll do it about a 10,000 foot level. So what I want to get across is that this is AutoCAD, and it's also a native Mac experience. And uh, how we came about that, I'm going to show some of the features talk about some of the benefits, because there's a lot of good benefits in there. We'll talk about mixed environments. We have a lot more customers now that are not just straight windows. They've got employees that they, you know, that have preferences for a certain um, operating system, such as uh, uh, using a Mac. And uh, they can now do that, AutoCAD, and work with the teams that are using the other version, AutoCAD for Windows, and work seamlessly between the two of those using the, uh, the AutoCAD DWG. So AutoCAD two, two, uh, 2013 for Mac. Uh, this is the third release of AutoCAD for Mac. I was actually involved in the first release. Um, I'm now in a different team, but uh, I did all the Apple stores, so I got to kind of tour all the cool uh, architecture of, and uh, um, buildings and locations for the, the Apple stores and kind of uh, go out there and tell people, hey, we're serious about AutoCAD on the Mac. Um, we originally had an AutoCAD on the Mac about 15 years ago, and it didn't do so well. But uh, since then, Apple's changed the whole uh, market. I mean, it's, uh, it was the hot thing. You go into any university. Ten years ago, I go in and speak to university students, and it was all PCs, every one of them. And then I started noticing over time, you know, a few here and there, MacBooks. And uh, now when I walk in and I speak to university students, it's it's over 50 50. It's it's probably 75 percent Mac. So uh, the market definitely sh shifted, and Autodesk undertook uh, um, porting to the Mac environment, and it is completely written from the ground up. This is not just taking Windows code and kind of slapping it on the, the Mac machine. This is from the very base level. We also wanted to do. Um, we had a lot of decisions to make. Do we make it look like the Windows version? Of course, we can't put the ribbon. Well, we could, but we didn't. Um, but when we talk to the people that were going to be the targeted audience, you know, the students, the architects, the industrial designers, different people that wanted the Mac version, they overwhelmingly said, hey, listen, do not give us a Windows version on a Mac. We don't want that. What we want is a standard Mac environment. We want the gestures. We want the menu bar. We want spotlight integration. Um, all those things that are native to the Mac uh, use palettes and visors and U different UI elements that only the Mac uses. And so that's exactly what we did. 
and we did it supporting the 2D and 3D tools of AutoCAD. Um, for those that just need 2D, simple 2D, just to let you know now, there is AutoCAD LT uh, for Mac 2013, and that is available in the Mac App Store and um, many other different places, but it is just 2D drafting, so it would be drawing in 2D, and you don't get all the power and flexibility that you do with the AutoCAD for Mac product. This is my favorite quote here. This is actually from uh, one of the customers that was in our initial beta testing for AutoCAD for Mac. And I loved it because it said it was the heart of AutoCAD with the soul of a Mac, and that is exactly what we were aiming for. Now, I will say, if you have team members that use AutoCAD for Windows and they jump to AutoCAD for the Mac, just like any other Windows users that jumps into a Mac environment, they complain about how it operates different. You know, why is this menu bar here? How come there's no ribbon? Uh, you know, the, the standard things like that. Um, but I'm going to show you ways that you can you can get beyond that. But for a for a Mac user that's always used a Mac, this is a native environment. They they pretty much get it intuitively. Uh, I want to apologize. I have a construction site next to me today, and also I'm in the flight path of uh, Canadian geese. So we could hear Canadian geese go by. Um, as I said, it's a native product, uh, you know, gestures, multi-touch, uh, visual approach. Um, we take advantage of all the underlying technology of the, the OSX platform. Um, so it's, it's uh, multi-threaded. Um, it's hooked right into the operating system. We program, you know, it's Coco, it's, it's using Aqua, it's using all the different things. This is not, like I said, a, uh, a Windows program that had used some, you know, way of getting onto a Mac system just so we could say, yeah, we have an AutoCAD for the Mac. That is not what we went for. It's a native Mac experience. Um, you have the powerful 3D tools. So AutoCAD is kind of like a, a Swiss Army knife or an industrial tool, industrial strength tool. It can do about anything. It's not specific to one industry. It's not just an architecture tool. It's not just a mechanical tool. I mean, it's used in so many ways. I could sit here all day and talk about exactly you know, what different uses I've seen AutoCAD used as. So it is, it is that Swiss Army knife. And uh, within that, we have the 3D tools. And they're powerful. They're more powerful than some of the tools out there on both uh, uh, the Mac and the Windows platform. We have associative surfaces. We have uh, 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 Boolean operations with history. Uh, may not mean much to you, but when you're doing 3D solids and you want to go back and change the original intent, um, it means a lot to you. Um, so conceptualizing, rendering, uh, you know, doing complex shapes. Uh, that kind of stuff is inside the AutoCAD for Mac, just as it is in the AutoCAD for Windows. So it is that that uh, Swiss Army tool. W another thing that people always want is they don't want a DWG file format, which is the native format for AutoCAD and a lot of Autodesk products. They don't want that to be compromised. They want to be able to trust and assure that, yes, this is going to work in any Autodesk product. It is 100% DWG compatible. Now, I'm going to put an asterisk there because when I say 100% DWG compatible, I don't like that term because it's not compatible. It's actually the Autodesk DWG libraries in on the Mac, the AutoCAD for Mac. So there is no compatibility. It is the same DWG. If you exchange a file created with AutoCAD for Mac with your, your teams or customers or suppliers or vendors that are using Autodesk tools, they're not going to even know that you're using a Mac. It is the exact same DDPG. So 100% compatibility with that. And uh, one thing I pointed out, I'm, I'm a big Autodesk historian. So I have all the products going back to 1982. <laughs> and I thought it'd be kind of fun to bring up and show one thing that, I mean, should one of your clients or you have a, uh, a longtime engineering architecture firm, uh, you have drawings from 1983. If you were one of the very few using AutoCAD back then, uh, you can actually open those drawings. So that's that's pretty amazing. You know, you got drawings from uh, 30 years ago that you're able to open and work with in those archives. Now, you're not going to stay back to an AutoCAD 2.8 file format. Um, that would be kind of ludicrous. I mean, who's working in AutoCAD 2.18 on a uh, 8086 machine on a floppy? Um, 
I know of one, and that would be myself. I, I play around with it, but uh, for the most part, you're going to save back. You can save back to an R14 drawing, and that would be about as far back as you'd want to go, and that's in the 90s. Um, so here's here's the AutoCAD UI, and I'm just showing kind of uh, what it looks like here, and I'll, I'll just kind of describe some of the things, and then we're going to just jump into the product. So we're going to kind of freeform through the different features of AutoCAD for Mac, and uh, you know, kind of hit the highlights, kind of show you what it does, kind of show you some of the power, some of the cool things, some of the things that differentiates it, um, just besides the you know the, the native DWG um, and the native Mac UI experience, we've got a lot of features that are very very powerful. Um, but um, um, we're, so we'll kind of freeform through those, and then we'll get into the uh, the Q and A. And so I'll try and answer everything I can. Um, uh, the only thing I can't answer is when is the next release of one of Autodesk products going to be released or what is in it or pricing. Those are the things that are kind of off topic to me and I get I get I get lawyers and salespeople really mad at me. So I, I, I those are questions I can't really address. If you want to know pricing, uh, the great thing here is MacMall. Just go to their site. They, they have all their, their promotions up there. So. so let's take a look here. What we have is uh, over on the side we have the tool sets and they'll roll out. We have a layer palette over here. So typically in AutoCAD, you have layers, and that's how you organize different elements of the drawing. Um, down at the bottom, we have an object properties inspector, and that's what t you, you select an object, that's what tells you the different attributes. It could be if you selected a hatch, it could tell you the area. It could, you can change the layer of that. You can select multiple objects and change what layer they're on, uh, their line type, their scale, um, many different uh, things. So let's go and let's dig right into AutoCAD for Mac here. So here we are. Like I said, it's a 3D tool. This this boat was done in AutoCAD, all in 3D. It is surfaces. So we have NURB surfaces, and those surfaces are associated. So I could actually generate a surface based on a spline. And I can extrude that, and then maybe later on down the road, you know, for this canopy here, I say I want to change, you know, how that how that uh, surface is defined. I can actually change the spline, just modify the spline, and it'll update the surface. So that's pretty powerful stuff. Um, what you're seeing here is not a rendered view either. I hope it looks nice um, over over online, but uh, we can go up here and we can change to. A conceptual view, so you can now you can see the surfaces in there. You can see how it was kind of modeled. You get an idea. Um, let's see here. X-ray, that's where you kind of get the surface, and you kind of see through your model, so you can kind of see in there. You can see back in the seats and the consoles. Uh, let's let's uh, sketchy. We have shades of gray, which is not to be confused with the book. Um, and back to conceptual, and we'll we'll show we'll go into some other things here. But uh, this is your tool sets here. You can have them, and you can drag them around, your, and, as well as you can change to annotation mode. So those are tools related to that. One of the beautiful things about AutoCAD is that uh, it's customizable. So all the menus and everything you see here can be customized. You can add your own things. You can remove things. Um, we can say show us palettes. Um, we can collapse to the left, so now everything is, is off, and I can just pull them out as I need them. Um, I can say show as palettes again, bring them back out. Um, let's go to another drawing here. Let's see here. So a hatch drawing here. And what you have, and, and AutoCAD for Windows doesn't have this feature, where you can go through your different drawings and uh, look at the different layouts of those. The layout is basically, if you want to think about it in context, it is the like what you plot on paper. So model space is the one-to-one. -one. You draw um, the building one-to-one. -one. There is no scale. Everything is one-to-one, -one, real world. Um, but when you put it on paper, you have to fit it on, say, a 24 by 36 inch sheet of paper. So you have to create different views. You want to put in your text, different things like that, your title block. Um, but we'll bring this up here. So we got model space here. Um, if I come in here and I select a hatch object, I get a visor up here at the top, and it gives me contextual information and things I can change. I can change, uh, you know, angles. Um, let's go into this here. 
if I wanted to get really crazy, I could say change all my brick, um, you know, to be a different angle. Um, another thing here, if I come across, let's see, I've got a brick problem in here, and I want to correct it. Let's see which view it is right here. So, you know, no mason is going to go out there and do his cinder blocks based on exactly the hatch pattern, the fill pattern here. Um, but you want your drawings to look nice, and you don't want to have a split brick at the bottom. So what we want to do is I just want to double click and bring up the hatch dialog, and I, I want to click to set a new origin so that my all my cinder blocks start at one point. And we'll just say, I, could, I can preview it, but I know it's right. I'll hit OK. Now you see I start with a full roll of cinder blocks. Um, and that's pretty nice. We'll go back up here again. If I wanted to, I could change different hatches uh, right on the fly. I can rotate those. I can change all different types of things about that hatch. I can also come over here. And another nice thing of, of the AutoCAD uh, UI is I can either pick everything off the menu bar and if I don't know where something is on the menu bar, if I just start typing hatch, and I go, oops, hatch, and I go, oh, and it'll show me where that is in the menu so I can use it again. Long-time AutoCAD users are going to use the command line, which is down here at the bottom. And uh, it's also where I, it also goes where I type. So I can type up here, let's see, um, hatch. And as I start typing, you can see it's filling in, what do you want? And it goes through different commands and system variables as my options. So that, that is the way to, you know, that I operate. I typically just type really fast. If you type fast, you won't see those, those uh, suggestions come up. But what I want to do is I've got some hatches that are actually not being displayed. I want to bring those uh, to, I want to send all the hatches to the back, so maybe text and line work um, are better displayed. So you see, the garage doors and everything were actually line work, and they were behind the hatches, and I did the hatch to back, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, I could see the line work behind it. There's also a text, you know, so bring text to front. Let's go and look at some other things here. How about dimensioning? So we have break dimension lines just like you would in regular AutoCAD. Um, I type in dim because I know that I don't want to do a dimension. Again, if I wanted to use the menu uh, pull down bar, or if I wanted to come over here to the annotation, we've got uh, the options right here. So linear dimension. And if I just hit enter, it'll allow me just to select the object rather than pick points. And then I can use my snap, you see, and right there. So that's your dimensioning. It's got all the standard dimension that you would have in AutoCAD and you would expect. Again, this is AutoCAD at the heart of everything here. Um, most of what you do um, is going to be similar to what you did in AutoCAD for Windows. The commands are going to be the same. There's some commands that um, are Windows specific that aren't going to be in the AutoCAD for Mac. And there's also some things that are specific to AutoCAD for Mac that aren't going to be on Windows. So, um, you know, uh, another thing is we have an API, and I can talk about that later because that's part of that flexibility of, of AutoCAD. Um, you can program it the way you want it. Let's see here. We got more 3D power. You know, a different uh, pavilion, and you see we've got tr transparent glass there. So you apply materials. Oops, a little carried away with my mouse. It must be daylight savings getting to me. So this this is another architecture that was uh, designed using um, AutoCAD. Um, some nice little productive productivity things. So you get busy drawings from people. You've got to clean up. Um, it used to be um, that in AutoCAD um, you'd insert a block, and so you have a block library, all these little pre-drawn parts. And so in this case, where I want to put another crane, uh, you know, a, a crane mount up here. Um, I would have to go and do insert and then find out, you know, where that block was and, you know, because it's in the drawing, it's right there. But um, it's not always going to be that easy. But if I, if I click on this one here, I have the ability to just say add selected and I can bring it up here. 
and scale. And we're, there we are. So I just added that. It's on the same layer as the other block, which is different than what if I was just to insert a, a regular block. So uh, that's a real helpful helpful thing to do. Um, you, know, you can select things. You can isolate things. So if I wanted to isolate objects, like everything but that text, I can do that. Uh, command Zoom, standard Windows uh, or Mac. Uh, um, uh, keys, shortcut keys work on that. Let's see here. Um, this is nice. So before I show you this cool gasket, um, one thing I wanted to show you is if, if we just drew lines and we did, we'll close that, um, we don't really have a rectangle. But if we were to go in and do geometric constraints, we could say things like, um, I want this this line here and this line here, select it, to be perpendicular. And you see I, I did that. I can hit enter, I can do another perpendicular, you know, I can take all the time I want, um, then I can connect these. Um, or let's uh let's draw that again as a rectangle. And I can actually, if I already have an object, I can say auto constrain. And what that's going to do is put constraints on that so that you can see the highlights there. These two are parallel. These two are parallel. We have a fixed. And so no matter what I do, while these may be lines and circles, you see that it maintains a rectangular shape because I've told the different lines to maintain um, uh, parallel and perpendicular. Um, let's take those constraints off and show you another thing here. Dimensional constraints. Uh, these are really nice because when I first learned AutoCAD I thought if I draw a line that's six inches long and I want to change it to 12 inches long, I should be able to just take a dimension line and then change the value of the dimension. And that isn't how it worked until a few years ago. Um, so I'm going to pick there I get the other side? There. So now I have a dimension, and I can actually name it. I could call it width, and we can say it's 7. You see how it controlled that top there? So that dimension there, actually, if I come in and say now 10, you see it changes that. And I could have had those, those two sides also constrained so that when I did that, the whole box uh, um, changed. So it's, it's pretty nice to have those, uh, those ge geometrical or dimensional constraints. Um, we've got this down here, and what we have is um, we can change things with this, and it automatically changes that whole gasket. So you see how we have this simple gasket here and we'll see that's 1.75, and there's so many different geometric constraints that it automatically adjusts. So you have it being coincident and running to the radial inside. Um, it makes it really nice to do parts like that. And uh, that's, that's pretty powerful stuff. Uh, let's, uh, let's see here. 3D surfaces. This is a surface here, and I've got controls to where I can actually change how that, that surface is. I can have it a smooth fit. Um, I can have it normal to the, the, uh, the, the beginning and the end. And it actually just changes how that, that is. You can see now I have a sharp. Yep. So now I have a sharp surface on there. Um, but I could change it back to a smooth fit, and I get that nice, nice organic shape there. Let's create something new here. We'll just use a standard template. And we got the view cube over here. That's common to all the different Autodesk products, and it's really nice. I could have went over here and changed it um, as well. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and change the modeling and We'll just draw a cube here and extrude it. 
Now you see it's a wireframe. I can change the visual style here. We'll change it to conceptual. Now one thing that's nice, when I was talking about those, those, those uh, objects that can maintain history, um, I can actually change you know, the, 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 the size, um, we'll say 0.75, um, changing, changing different parameters or um, what they call press pull, I could actually just come and uh, change them by, by dragging. We have the uh, press pull over here, pick the surface and just pull. So it makes it really nice and intuitive. Uh, another thing that we're able to do um, is uh, underlay a PDF. So you, know, you, you, have, you have a drawing, somebody's giving you the PDF of the file. Um, they didn't give you the DWG, so we're just gonna PDF attach. And there it is, King Lear ground plan. I get that twice. We'll try that again. Went too fast. PDF attach. Grab that. We'll say open. And we'll say attach. And we'll say a scale factor of one. And there it is. Now, that's the, that's an actual PDF. So the, the, for whatever reason, the client or the documents for the contract said, uh, we're not giving you our source drawings. We don't want you to take the data out of there. Maybe there's a liability. The lawyers don't like that. But watch what I can do here. I can start drawing a line. And as I come in, I can actually snap to those different areas and uh, draw you know, maybe I'm I'm building you know some sort of outer frame or or deck, and uh, I want to use the reference PDF, so I can absolutely do that. Um, that's pretty nice. Another thing is arrays. We'll do a couple things here, and then we'll get into uh, closing and and, and uh, Q and A. So what I want to do here is I want to say insert, and we'll insert this tree. So we got we got the one tree. Um, before I do that, we'll show you how array works. Now I have the ability to go rectangular, and you see I can see what I previewed there. I've also got the visor at the top. I can tell how many rows I want and how many columns, or I can just drag it. I can change the spacing. And after I've created it, I can always go back and change it too. See how it's adding more rows to that spacing? And I could go back and change that spacing if I wanted. Um, that works great for adding seats, cars. Um, I can actually remove one item out of there. Uh, rect uh, a, a polar would be a circular, like a bolt pattern. But it could also be stadium seating in the round on an arc. Um, here's another thing here. If we do array and we do path, uh, so we'll pick that object to array. We'll select path, and you see um, what we have is it's going along that spline. It's actually linked to that spline. Um, I can change to divide, so it's dividing by a certain value. Um, and if I come in and grab that spline, you see as I pull those around, the trees are dividing. I told it I wanted a certain number, and uh, that's what I ended up, oops, ended up with, and it, it's associated to that spline. So that's that's a pretty nice handy thing um, as things are changing. So um, yeah, there's all. I mean, I could go through the uh, 785 different commands and features of AutoCAD. I don't think you want to do that. Um, you know, we have the viewport, so if we were to go into a 3D drawing, um, and I can do this really quick here, um, we take, uh, let's say, this boat, and we come up in here, and we say, viewport configuration, we want uh, three left, and so I got the different views, now I could actually come in and uh, configure and automatically figure out what I want 
and it'll set the different views. So we have different ones I can change how they're going to look. So we'll put one at X-ray. Um, this one down here will change the, to a northeast isometric, and we'll put it as a 3D, uh, a 2D wireframe just to make it look really stand out. So you can create the different things. If we were to use the view cube here, this is how you get the different views of your drawing. Um, granted, you wouldn't work in the wireframe, but I mean these are things that you stand, you take for granted in AutoCAD for Windows, and they are in AutoCAD for Mac. So for the person who prefer, prefers in your organization working on a Mac, that's exactly what they have here. Um, you also have um, the ability using the project manager. Um, the project manager palette is the same thing as the sheet set manager in AutoCAD for Windows. And this is a way that people take a whole project, and you think of it as a project, if I have a large architecture building design, I'm going to have maybe 50 sheets, uh, 50 layouts, that is. And you know, I can navigate through those. I can uh, publish them or plot them all at once, put them all to a PDF. I can have all the title blocks update. So if I took one sheet out instead of you know, sheet two of the the the, the, the the document, you know, the plan, the project plan, it would automatically renumber the others um, in the title block. So it does a lot of the automating of a sheet set for you. Well, the AutoCAD for Mac has the project manager, and that too reads the DST file, which um, could be out on the network. So you have a mix of AutoCAD for Mac and AutoCAD for Windows users, and they're all using sheet set managers and project managers and that DST file. Both of them can open up and work within that and actually see that the other person has one of those sheets opened up so they know that they can't open it except for read-only. So that's some of that, that coordination in a team. Um, those, those members of the team, they could be in two different offices, Denver and St. Louis. They don't know one's on a Mac and one's on a window because they're working with tools that edit the, the DWG. They're working in the same sheet set, and uh, that's, it's pretty nice to have it that way. So one, let's do one more thing here. Um, you know, you've got all the great tools of documentation, multi-line columns. But let's say I want to send this drawing to somebody. Um, I can actually upload the drawing online. And uh, that uses AutoCAD WS. Now this is pretty nice um, because it's a browser. It's also an app on the AutoCAD for Mac. It also works on iOS devices and Android devices. Now, the really wicked thing about this is that I can actually real-time collaborate with somebody. So I can send that drawing to my client. He doesn't have AutoCAD, but he can bring up the AutoCAD WS website, and he can actually see my cursor um, as I move it around. We can mark things up. Okay, it's one's being uploaded. Um, but he can actually see the changes I make. Um, they could be on their iPad. They could be at the job site. They can actually be offline and actually have that, that file. You can prevent them from doing certain things. But it's a nice way for that client or maybe your, your, your coworker who's out at the field site to mark up the drawing. And you're able to see that back in the office. They don't have to have AutoCAD. AutoCAD WS is free. Um, and uh, like I said, it's all it's open and available. Oh, we're still uploading. Um, let's just go and grab another drawing, and I'll show you. So it kind of looks like AutoCAD, um, but it's not. You can do just minor editing, annotation, and, and changes. Oh, I don't have a full drawing there. Um, but you just you work, you zoom things. Um, I can share. I can have the design record as the drawing is changed. It keeps changes version one, version two, version three. So if you're going back and forth with somebody, you can roll back and see what those changes are. Um, and also uh, uh, a design flow, a design feed. So we could put things in here like um, I changed, changed the floor padding. And we'll post that. And I could actually select where at that was it. Let's see, uh, we'll just put this in here. Uh, Moved stairs, and we'll pick the location. There isn't any on that one right there, and we'll post. Now when the other person gets the drawing, they know what node it applies to and where at in the drawing. So that's, that's pretty cool stuff. Um, go back to the, the PowerPoint here. 
Um, here's 2D. We've got rendering. So you've got, you can see the wireframe there, and you can see the, where the materials and actual lighting have been applied. This is the actual display and the render. Um, you know, again, it's AutoCAD, the industrial strength tool, 100% DWG, developed and supported by Autodesk. Um, native Mac UI, same commands and workflow, networking cross-platform licensing. So if I have AutoCAD for Windows, I can actually use that same serial number for AutoCAD for Mac, and I can activate on two different machines in a 12-month period. I can also, if I'm a large company and have a network licensing manager, it will manage those AutoCAD Mac and AutoCAD for Windows and other Autodesk products. So that's, that's pretty nice and flexible. Um, there's the AutoCAD WS. Again, it's free. It's nice on the iPad to be out at a job site and be able to look at all your drawings and make notes on them, and then the person back in the office gets notified there's been changes. It didn't change the source of drawing. What it did was it put notes. So uh, you know, there's a 30-day trial version of AutoCAD for Mac on the AutoCAD website, and I'm going to pull up the Q&A, and let's see here. Ooh, I see a question. Are they going to have a Revit for Mac? That's one of those ones where immediately after I get off this uh, this live webcast, I would have the lawyers. They would sense this. They have a they have that uh, that psychic sense. They'd know I'd said something bad. Um, what we do is we're we're developing things on Mac platforms. We have products on almost every platform now, and where it makes sense, we do it. Um, I can't comment on any future plans or if we have anything in the works, but I can say that we do hear um, people wanting uh, a Revit on the Mac uh, uh, quite a bit. And there's other ways to do that as well. I'm not talking about virtualization or anything like that. Um, for instance, we have an uh, Autodesk Inventor, a, a Inventor Fusion that's in the cloud, and that runs on both Mac and Windows. It runs on your desktop, but it's also utilized in the cloud so that we don't have to write specific platform. I mean, it gets to be really tough to try and balance, um, just like we do with Maya, where we write for Linux, Mac, uh, uh, Mac, and Windows. And I can tell you that team burns out because there's some features we can't do in the products because one operating system doesn't support it. If we had a one operating platform, um, you know, say, uh, 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 in the cloud, in Autodesk 360 cloud, um, that kind of takes out the, you know, what platform you're on. You just run it. And uh, no matter what machine you go to, you can just run it and go. So maybe there'll be a Revit for Mac. We hear that a lot. But it's a it's a great big job. I mean, I, I remember people asking us when we did the AutoCAD for Mac, they're like, oh, I could do it in like three weeks. It's just a bit of uh, recompiling. It was not. We had 14 million lines of code. We had dependencies, dependencies on Windows um, uh, UI elements. It was literally a ground-up effort. It took almost two years of a team of 80 people writing. It was huge. So, uh, you know, Revit would be along the same type of uh, large, large undertaking. Um, any more questions? Come on, you got to have some. We have some sitting in the other panel. Oh, you know what? I was not looking at the queue. There we go. Ah, okay. Sorry. I was looking at the chat. I'm getting used to this WebEx today. Uh, so Mike Gilbert, you asked, is there support for VLAX within AutoLisp? It's a great question. The problem is, no, VL, uh, Visual Lisp is not supported in AutoCAD for the Mac because it utilizes Windows libraries. So it's compiled and everything using Windows dependent files. And since AutoCAD or since the Mac platform doesn't have Windows uh, um, um, core libraries, they aren't supported. That's the one thing in, in Lisp. So you can do almost anything in Lisp but Visual Lisp. So the VLAX. Uh, let's see. Are there any compatibility issues if multiple employees in a work group work on a single plan regardless of using uh, PC-based AutoCAD or Mac-based AutoCAD? I, I, I talked about that during the presentation. No, it's the same DWG. There's no difference. Um, I, I've talked to a large uh, company 
and they were given the latitude to pick what platform they want their software on. They were able to pick, I want a Mac or a PC. Uh, I had a couple of employees sit down with me, and they were kind of like snicker, and they're like, uh, some of the team doesn't know I'm using a Mac, you know. And they're working on these big projects, and it doesn't. there's no incompatible problems because it's the same DWG. They can work off the same sheet set. Um, not really an issue there. And, you know, script files, you know, we're talking about the VLX. Script files are one of the most powerful things that uh, are in AutoCAD. You know, if you have to do things multiple times, write a script. It just automates your commands. Um, those are all supported and, and standard list functions. Let's see here. Any recommendations for incorporating Buzzsaw into a, into a Mac work environment? Um, that's a good question. Uh, right up the top of my head, I mean, because you can get to Buzzsaw files and bring them down, um, you can work with them locally and then upload them. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, Autodesk is doing Autodesk 360, which you're able to host a whole bunch of files up there for free, and uh, that's kind of the, that's kind of the direction that we're going. Um, Buzzsaw is not going to go away. Um, Buzzsaw will still be there. Um, I just don't know. Um, beyond manually working with the files and bringing them down from Buzzsaw, because that's that's how I've worked with in the past on Buzzsaw. So mm -hmm. I don't think it really. I I don't know if there's anything that I could recommend for incorporating that other than bringing down your drawings and uploading them. You know, checking out your drawings in Buzzsaw. What are the file storage requirements for Mac? Are most of your files on hard drives? Um, you can have them on, on hard drives or you could have them in a cloud, you know, the, the Autodesk 360, they give you a, a lot. I think it's like two or three gigabytes of storage. You could store them in there, um, Dropbox, all those different things. But just a standard installation, it's, uh, I believe, about 900 megabytes. So uh, 900 megabytes to 1.4 gig. I'm just, you know, that's that's one of those statistics that... I've heard many different times, and I don't know where off the top of my head, but I'm, I'm, it's not over 1.4 gig um, uh, footprint on your hard drive. Um, the rest is how big are your drawings? I mean, if you had a thousand little drawings, you know, drawings of floor plans, well, that might not be much more than, um, you know, 500 megabyte. Whereas if I had that boat or the, you know, really large uh, designs in 3D. Um, those could be considerably larger. Uh, it, it just depends on what your files you're creating and editing are and you do. Does AutoCAD for Mac have a walkthrough rendering? If so, can things be animated? No. Uh, there is no walkthrough, uh, fly-through, or animation in AutoCAD for Mac. We do hear that request quite a bit, and uh, that, uh, that's something we'll look at. Um, what else can you tell me about Autodesk 360? Well, you can go to Autodesk, just Google it, or just, uh, I believe it's 360.autodesk.com. And what that allows you to do is put files up there, share files with people. Um, there's actually applications in 360. So, uh, you know, there's different viewers. Um, you know, Inventor Fusion 360, Fusion 360 is up there. I run a full 3D modeling. Um, application and I'm able to translate files up there. So if I, for, for example, if I had, um, my friend gave me a bunch of SolidWorks files and says, dude, I want you to work with these. Great. I just drag and drop them into my 360 and in the cloud it automatically converts those SolidWorks files into inventor files that I can use behind the scenes. Um, it's pretty powerful. Um, there's also PLM. So you, if you're doing large uh, design projects, you may want to keep track of all the different drawings, their different versions, which one's the latest, and, uh, you know, um, automate your team so they know, um, you know, don't grab an old version and build it. Uh, let's see. What else? Let's see. Will Autodesk have cloud-based apps such as Adobe has done? We already do. We have quite a few of them. AutoCAD WS is, is a cloud-based app. Um, we have Fusion 360 cloud-based app. We have uh, AutoCAD LT on a hosted environment. That's technically a cloud-based app. We have a Revit that we've been playing with 
um, on a hosted environment, which means all you need is a browser. So back to the question of could I have Revit on a Mac? Well, yeah, you could also have it on your Linux box. Um, that's the things we're looking at. Cloud and mobile really are powerful right now. And it's not because it's a big buzzword that everybody wants to hear, cloud, cloud, cloud. It's because we can harness computing in the cloud, um, not just storage, but we can take things that wouldn't take, for example, we, we do rendering out of uh, uh, 360, so an AutoCAD or a Revit rendering that may take three hours to do, a very complicated one. We do it on the cloud, and we can do it in about five minutes. Because instead of just being locked down to a four uh, core CPU on your machine, we're able to say, uh, let's burst and let's hit 200 CPUs and get it done in you know, a fraction of the time. Um, you know, we have access to all those different, uh, that power. So it's, it's actually uh, um, you know, the computational power that you get from the cloud that's the real benefit. Uh, so yeah, we, we've got a lot of uh, things that we're putting up in the cloud. Um, Autodesk University, if you go to au.autodesk.com, it's free registration. There's actually a presentation and main stage um, where Carl Bass, our CEO, and Jeff Kowalski, our CTO, my boss, um, talk about um, the cloud and all the different applications and the cool things we're doing on it. We have a product called Formit for the iPad where you can do conceptual architecture, and it's free. Um, we have 123D. Um, apps, all free. There's uh, cloud-hosted versions, iOS versions, and PC versions, and Mac versions. So we have a lot that we're doing up there. Let's see. Will AutoCAD 2013 generate code for CNC? Uh, it will not generate a CNC file um, path. So I think that's what you're looking for is a cutting tool path. But you can export a DWG or a DXF out to a, you know, uh, um, your application, HSMC or, or Hypermill or whatever you use to generate those paths. Um, there are Lisper teams that will do it as well, but I don't think you're going to get the cutting path opt optimizations you would get in a professional machining application. Um, I'm new to AutoCAD. Are there video tutorials similar to what Apple does? for their products, absolutely. If you go to YouTube um, and search Autodesk, there's an Autodesk channel. We've got thousands and they're training and they're, um, you know, what we're working on. I mean, Autodesk, I have a labs group. They're not even products, they're technologies. We, we turned one into a real product and you could actually use your camera just using your standard digital camera, even your iPhone, and take a picture of something, a couple different pictures, and generate a 3D model with textures. Mind-blowing stuff. That was one of my projects. Loved it. Um, we do all kinds of stuff. That's up there on the Autodesk channel. And then we have uh, about 30 million customers, 20 to 30 million customers. And so if you just you know, Google or hit YouTube with um, the products you're interested in, um, you're going to see a whole plethora of, of informational stuff. Let's see. Is there AutoCAD 2013 tutorial for beginners? Um, when you actually start AutoCAD, there's a series of, of tutorials that it'll walk you through as well as also on the YouTube. Um, there's books. We have a lot of authors that write books. Uh, as a customer, that's what I always did. Product manuals are great, but when you go out and buy a third-party book, whether it be a digital one off of Kindle or iBooks, or you go down to your Barnes & Noble, they usually have mastering, you know, whatever, put your name of your product in there, and they go through the nitty-gritty um, uh, from the point of, I don't know anything about this product, to the very complex uh, APIs, um, you know, things like that. Um, speaking of APIs, I forgot to mention Object ARX, which is the, the uh, programming uh, language that, that AutoCAD uses on the Windows platform. It's a C++-based application. It's what third-party applications are built on. It is supported. So if you've got programmers that want to write your own applications on top of AutoCAD, they can do that beyond Lisp. Uh, looks like I got them. Wait, hold it. Yeah. All right, so there's no other questions. Um, 
thanks, Sean, for a great presentation and for uh, taking the time to answer all the questions today. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Again, uh, the session was recorded and will be posted on MacMall.com. Um, you know, we hope you found it a valuable use of your time and hope you got your questions answered. So thanks for joining us. Thanks again, Sean, and everyone have a great rest of your day. The presentation is now over. Thank you.